Hello everybody! Today, me and Kung Fellow will try to explain about the basic plot of every generic isekai trash out there. So, here we go! First, we have the generic isekai world. We have the main continent where the main of the action takes place, and we have the Beast Girl continent, and then up north we have the Demon King continent, and then on the top right we have the obligatory Japanese continent. You know, standard isekai stuff. Alright, let's go! So. First of all, we have our protagonist, the main character Kun, spawning in in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the continent, like the forest of whatever. And he just reincarnated from his life as a loser from our Earth. The loser is then reincarnated to this another world where he just has the blessings of a god and has super god tier powers like bending all the four elements, mind control, or some other weird healing stuff, yada yada yada. The protagonist is then readjusting life in this other world until suddenly he hears a scream. What was that, Kung Fellow? What was that? <coughs> he hears a girl screaming and he went and helped the girl and apparently it's an elf, a beautiful busty blonde elf that is a hundred percent Totally legal, by the way. Definitely. Definitely. She's definitely not underage. Maybe. So, then we start. Action scenes happens. The protagonist saves the girl. Yada, yada, yada. She tells about uh, her sad backstory about oh, how she was from this elven village in the northeast of the continent. And then big bad humans invade, I don't know, maybe bandits or slave traders, yada yada yada. And then she's got, she's given a slave collar and then um, I think we all know where this is going. So she's now living as a slave and she's saved by the protagonist and she offers herself to be the protagonist's slave to repay his kindness, so to speak. So, if you're someone from the 20th century who reincarnated into that world, I will give you three options to choose from. So, here we go. A. You accept the elf woman's offer and turn her into your personal slave. B. Refuse and remove her collar and telling her that her life is her own choice and set her free. Or C. You simply says no and leave her alone or just take her to the nearest settlement where she can be free. If you choose B or C, then I'm so sorry you are the worst isekai protagonist of all time because we all know if you want to be an isekai protagonist, you gotta have at least one slave girl in your harem. You all know that for all isekai protagonists, making a woman your slave is the perfect way so that she won't leave you. Am I right, Kung Fellow? For a After making the elf girl his personal slave, he decided to travel to the nearest human capital city where he met the princess of that kingdom in an accidental fashion. Either she's going undercover to see her kingdom, yada yada yada, but then um, stuff and shoes, she got kidnapped, and then the protagonist decides to save her and Lo and behold, it's revealed that, oh my god, this kidnapped lady is the princess of that kingdom. And then once he saves her, he brings her back to the castle, and then the king just went, you have, you have saved my daughter, brave hero. As a reward, I will let you bang my daughter, brave hero. That's pretty much it. Somehow the princess falls in love with the protagonist, yada yada yada. The protagonist decides to stay in the kingdom, but then suddenly a magical prophecy came in and told about a threat with the demon king up north in the island of demons something. So. To combat that, the king asks the protagonist to travel with the princess and the slave girl that he owns to defeat the demon king. Yes, I know, it's very exciting, Kung Fellow. And then after getting the mission from the king, the protagonist decided to travel down the north. We're going on a filler arc, baby. So the protagonist decided to take a shortcut into the island of the cat people, cat girl people, and there in the island they encounter some bad people sent by the demon king to enslave the cat people. So yeah, the protagonist decided to be a good guy and fight all of the demon king forces away. 
Yeah, the good guys win again. And then there, the protagonist meets a cat girl that is so in love with him in first sight because he's so strong and manly and yada yada yada. So the cat girl decides, I'm gonna fall in love with this guy and yeah, she definitely, this cat girl is definitely not sus at all. So 100% safe. So after liberating the island of the cat girl, the protagonist and his party of merry harem women decided to sail north. And north, they stumble upon another cat girl tribe but this time in the desert. The protagonist also discovered some ancient magical weapon or something like that protected by the tribe of the cat desert cat girl people and then there's this prophecy that ah oh, if you're the chosen one you'll be able to wield the weapon blah 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 but the cat girl from the desert tribe just says nah like you're, you're not that person dear protagonist I will fight you so she fights the protagonist gets her ass whooped and then she falls in love with the protagonist because oh my god he's so much stronger than me and so manly so powerful he's gonna save us he manages to pull out the weapon and become the super swerke. He becomes a super human wielder of the sword of the manly protagonist, whatever the fuck, I don't know. So then, after that, the desert tribe cat girl decided to follow the protagonist, and from then on, another party joins the harem. And before the final confrontation with the demon king, they decided to go to another filler arc. So in this case, we sail northeast into a land that looks suspiciously like Japan. Over there, the party landed and then we can see that there's a local trouble brewing up. Some local lords decided to rise up in rebellion and overthrow the current king of the land because of reasons, I guess, that they don't want to show. But then, Oh, the local king is in trouble and he saw all these heroes from the great lands saying, Oh, you have to help us, dear hero. Our land is suffering from a rebellion from lords who are disloyal to me. If you can save us, then I will let you bang my daughter. And of course, like the gentleman he is, the protagonist agrees. So the protagonist decided to save the country's whack off the bad rebellious people and bring stability to the Japanese-like land. Once that happens, everybody's happy, Lord's happy, the Japanese princess is also happy and also she starts falling in love with the protagonist because he saves her country. Another one goes to the harem bowl. With the harem complete and the protagonist reaching super completely overpowered levels, they decided to finally travel north to the continent of the Demon King. So once they arrived to the continent of the Demon King, they, they discovered a horrible secret that the Demon King is not a Demon King. It's actually a Demon Queen stuck in the body of a child that looks like a child but she claims she's 5,000 years old so it's technically, she's technically an adult. Yeah, 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 and, and her clothing doesn't really help. They had a fight. The protagonist wins, and uh, it's revealed that the Demon King is the Demon Queen. Isn't really evil, and she's manipulated by her dad to be evil. Sympathy points are given, and the Demon Queen joins the protagonist's harem. So yeah, after that revelation, the Demon King is defeated by the whole party and the protagonist lives happily ever after with his harem of definitely not underage girls. Yeah. That, that's pretty much every generic isekai ever written. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and um, yeah, please, please, please do not make girls into your slaves. Thank you.